do an art tip really quick. So I've gotten some questions on Instagram. I'm going to read this. Two specific ones covering the same subject. And this is selection flats. So the question first, Channing and Bailey asked, what's the purpose of the select flats in terms of how I build upon them? And then Trips Art asked, why do I do the select flats? Why don't you just start coloring? Is it easier that way or something? So let me explain um, why do I do select flats and then flats and uh, so forth? So this is the final cover art for the new Mega Visions issue five coming out, right? Looks nifty. Um, this is my selection flats. So if you guys followed the whole process of me uh, creating this, you'll know that I drew the line art, scanned it in, and the first thing I set up was the selection flats. Why? Why not just start coloring this? There's a few reasons for this, right? So one, selection flats versus coloring flats, right? So the, Rob, you see how Guts here is green and his sword is blue and his the Dreamcast is pink and these daggers are yellow and this controller is blue. This isn't because I'm going to color him green or blue or yellow or purple. I'm not even building out the colors. This is so I have selections. It used to be called masks. Sometimes people just pad them out. Um, I do it this way for a reason. Um, if you look, I'll turn the lines down here to 50%. If I turn the lines down to 50%, you see that these flats go all the way up to the edge of the, the lines. Um, the reason for that is so that as I'm coloring, if I want to select the sword and airbrush the sword or airbrush behind him and not the sword, I can just select guts and see how the sword isn't cut out for him. I can select him and I'm using these for selections, big giant selections, not, not trying to select this little gun here, this uh, his pouches, the armor, which I could, I could go and do 70 different levels of things. It'd be a little overkill. So I tend to do, when I do my select flats, flats to save time, I will basically try to just create uh, basic levels of depth. Like I know that's going to be one level of depth, the sword, he will be a secondary, the daggers will be another, the controller areas will be another. Like I know I'm going to want to airbrush this controller behind him at some point for lighting. So it's for selection efficiency. If if imagine while I'm coloring, I want to select this controller. Then I have to go down there and manually trace the controller. And then I want to go do it again. Then I have to do that again. And then again and then again. So this allows me before I start to pick what areas overall within levels of depth from foreground to background all the way to the very background, which is this selected here, um, later on in the rendering process. It's a little tedious. Could I just start painting the whole thing and not do it? Sure, but you're, it's gonna bite you in the ass. Like Somewhere down the way, you're gonna be repeating the same selection thing. And by the way, every time you do, it's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna miss little edges. You're gonna miss areas. Um, it's gonna become a problem if you don't do that. So I do this first. I just don't overkill it. I could have, on top of guts, uh, made his arm a selection, made this, made his cape a selection. These little things aren't as important to me because I can just manually select those from the coloring flats if I really wanted to, right? Or just draw around. So it's not. You just got to find out what your preference is, um, and you're only going to know after doing it a couple hundred times. So not really. More like a, 
I'd say several times, seven to 12 times, about a dozen, then a dozen images, you're gonna know how you like to work. Um, so that's w why I set up the selection flats. Is it easier that way? Uh, let me see here. Then I use the selection flats also to create the coloring flats. Turn the lines back up. Um, and then the coloring flats are the basic colors that the character is going to be before you add shading, lighting, and world building and stuff. So um, and then we'll turn that off and turn on this. And then, you know, eventually you get to the final image. So here, when I wanted to get some atmospheric effect on that controller, let me drag the selection flats over, right? I can select, watch this, the controller and just, now this is a flattened image, right? So the, you're gonna see the strokes over there. But if I wanna go here and just create some atmospheric, it would be really nice if I turn that on, see? Understand that this has a stroke over the final image, which I color under the stroke in while I'm working, so it's a little little off. But but you see, very quickly, look, if I wanted to go in there, and let's say, check this out. Let's say you submit, here's another reason why this is really important. Let's say I submit this, and they're like, hey, we want to change the daggers. Now, could I go in there and draw around the daggers? Certainly. Could I select every little color? Certainly. I could also just take uh, my selection flats and then very quickly I could create a gradient map and change the color of the daggers to whatever they want, you know, when there's color changes down the way. Say they're like, we want, I don't know, blue daggers, you know. Those changes become so easier later because I have that. So at some point, you're going to have to go and make those selections. You just don't want to have to keep doing it twice or a dozen times or half dozen times. So you just set it up once. Now, when I'm setting them up, I do like to also trap. I call it trapping. Um, I like the selection flats to go under the lines pretty much to the edge. There's a couple reasons for that. One, um, when I do like to tint the lines, I can always just overlay. Uh, don't sorry, I could yeah overlay the lines. Uh, it's really not going to show up on this, is it? So here, if I wanted to create an effect, right? So it's going under the lines, and I can. It's a little, it's a little weird. I, I just like to do that for reasons. Oh. I'll tell you exactly. Here's the biggest reason why I do that. This is the easiest way to explain it. When I make the selection flats, and I say I want to create an atmospheric effect, right? Right. I want to create atmospheric effect between guts and that controller. Okay, I'm going to go here. If it doesn't go all the way up to the line, when I create the atmospheric effect, it's going to go... It, it, this whole area right here wouldn't be colored, like around the edge of those lines. See what I'm saying? So... If this controller was just select modify contract, uh, let me let me not bring it to the edge. If it wasn't to the edge of that line, and I go to create atmospheric effect, see what happens? You end up with an unnecessary stroke. So when I make the selection flats, I you know I draw around the image, and then I have to also select the lines and manually draw in the edge of that stuff. When you, in traditional art, like in airbrushing, these would just be masks. You have these pieces of cardboard. People sometimes would make masks, trace around them, and airbrush in there. That's, that's the basic idea. Um, I call them select flats because in Photoshop, that right there, this is a mask. It's a slightly different situation. So that's the process. Select flats so that I can select big areas of the image while I'm airbrushing. Coloring flats for the base colors that the character and all the elements are going to be before I add lighting. Before I add lighting. Okay. 
Um, and if I want to get into something specific, you know, I could I could always use the color flats to quickly color, pick a color if I wanted to. And the point of the select flats is so that you can get to the final image as quick as possible. They help with airbrushing in between the large areas of colors. They help you reselect things if you want to change the color of something down the way. So that's that. Is there any questions in the chat room? Does anybody here have any questions about this, about selection flats? We're at the 10 minute mark, so I'm just gonna... Um, I've tried everything to not have to do this sort of stuff. Uh, there's no easy way around it. Just spend the fucking extra hour or two doing it. It's, it's my advice. Uh, there's no way around it. I, there are programs that will auto flat. I've made a couple videos on that. If you look in the art tips, auto flatting. None of it's going to get you the selection flats. No auto flatting program is going to get you selection flats. You're going to have to manually make those because you need to know what areas of the image are going to be separated. How's the computer going to know that? There's no way. It's impossible. So, um, and all those auto flatting programs do is just take an area that isn't closed or semi-closed on your drawing and dump um, a little bit of flat, a little bit of color into every piece. <laughs> With the way I draw, that means a lot of this stuff, all these things would have extra bits of flat, which is completely unnecessary. So there's no automatic, easy way to do this. Every artist I've ever talked to who tells me there's some program or some easy thing that could do it for them always ends up hiring someone else to do the flats or they end up doing them themselves or they go to like the super digital painting thing so they don't have to deal with it. Um, I just, this is the kind of art I like to make. This is how it's made. I do record the flatting process on a complicated image like this, which I don't consider that complicated, but it's got some details. It took about two or three hours, you know, to set up the file, you know, but then I got, I colored it in eight. So, you know, there's always a technical part to your job that's not creative, whether it's invoicing or file prep, whatever. Selection flats. All right, everybody, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and let this video ingest and then come back on and we're going to do some color pencil work. If you have any other questions, go feel free to ask me on Instagram or leave them here or email me directly, rob at sketchcraft.com, and I will answer those questions as soon as possible. Peace, everybody. Oh, hey, how you doing? Exit.